Hello guys, welcome back to Techarji. I'm your host Rajat Goyal and today in this video we have got the most awaited phone of 2022 which is this Nothing Phone 1. This phone comes with a unique design which actually feels very premium and this is running on Nothing OS which seems to be quite interesting. Today I'm going to tell you the best 40 features of this smartphone. So if you are interested in this one, make sure you watch this till the end and give a thumbs up if you like this video. So let's get started. Let's start with this Nothing OS interface first. This looks very similar to Android 12's dock look. However, you can see some important changes. Like you see this control center, this has large icons for mobile data and Bluetooth which are pretty useful. Moreover, this mobile data one has multiple options in it. You can control the Wi-Fi and hotspot with this one as well. Even if you go to the settings, you will see kind of similar look to the stock Android. But the font here is the interesting thing which is the nothing font, the dotted one which looks cool. This phone has got some exclusive widgets into it which you can call the nothing launcher widgets. So if you long tap on the home screen and click on this widgets here, you will see these four new widgets and these here are primarily for cloak and weather. Trying to do something like pixel I guess but I sort of like these widgets. On the home screen by default you will see these normal looking icons but there is something interesting here. You can actually enlarge these icons. Now enlarging a single icon may not look that good but when you enlarge a folder you will see the magic happens here. So this folder changes into an iOS like implementation of the folders which looks great and not only it looks great but it has added function to it. You can actually use the first three apps or icons directly out of it and for the rest of them you can click on this folder and it opens like a normal folder. By default here you will not see any always on display as well. If you lock the phone you will just see this fingerprint icon which you can use to unlock the phone but the always on display option is kind of hidden here you can actually enable it. You need to go to settings, display and lock screen and here you will see this option always show basic info of lock screen. So now if you will again go to the lock screen, you will be able to see this beautiful AOD with the nothing font. You can see date, month, time, battery percentage and notifications here. Now let's talk about this unique Glyph interface. You directly get an option in control center to control this interface and you can long tap on it to get into its settings. The first thing you will see here is that you can change the brightness of this Glyph interface. So you can play this Glyph interface with the help of ringtones. By default you get 10 ringtones for the call notifications. Similarly you will have this option for the notification sounds. You will also see the my sounds option here where you can actually add your sounds here. Basically if you want to add any ringtone or song you can add it here and enjoy the glyph interface along with that song or the ringtone. And that's not it. There are more uses of this glyph interface. You can use this one for the charging meter. So whenever you will charge your phone you will see this kind of a charging meter and you can basically get an idea of how much your phone is charged. Then you can also use this Glyph interface to get the Google Assistant feedback whenever you use it. And you can even use it for this flip to Glyph feature. Basically, if you have enabled the flip to mute feature, whenever you flip your phone, you will be able to see a blink of this Glyph to know that flip to mute has been enabled now. And here you also get this option to schedule this interface. One more option which I felt nothing can add into it is the adaptive brightness for this Glyph interface as well. Since we are already talking about this Glyph interface, let me tell you one more use of this Glyph. So you can use this Glyph interface as a fill light for your camera and you can turn it on from the flash option here. You will have to tap this thrice to enable this Glyph flash and this Glyph light is actually better than the normal flash because it gives you scattered and soft light which is much better than the normal flash. And talking about the unique features here, this phone has not only got this Glyph interface but also one additional light which you can use as a camera recording indicator. It is disabled by default so let me tell you how you can enable it. You need to go into the camera app, click on three dots here to get into the camera settings, scroll down and you will see this recording light indicator option. Now if you keep this option enabled and whenever you start the video recording on your smartphone you will see this red LED blinking on the back of your smartphone which is good for privacy as well and this is actually very bright light. Even if you go outside and use the camera recording you will still easily be able to see this light blinking. You also get this pop-up view or floating windows feature here 
To use that, you just need to go to the recents, tap on this app icon and you will see the pop-up view option. By default, it goes into a mini window, but you can always tap on it and use it as a floating window, which is very useful. You also get to see an app installing animation on the home screen. So whenever you are installing any application from Play Store and if you go to the home screen, you will be able to see this kind of icon which shows that this app is being installed on the smartphone and whenever it completes, this turns into a normal app icon. This again is kind of similar to iOS app installing animation. There are some more home screen customization options. You need to long tap on home screen and click on customization here where you can change the wallpapers of your smartphone. By default, you also get some cool wallpapers from nothing which you can use. So if you click on change wallpaper and go to nothing, you will be able to see these four cool new wallpapers given by nothing. And here you can also use the accent color option of the Android 12 where you can use the wallpaper color as your accent color or you can also use some basic colors which are provided here. One feature which I especially want to mention here which is very useful feature but you get this feature in very less smartphones is the screen attention feature. So if you go into settings display, you will find this option inside this screen timeout settings. So how it works is it doesn't allow the phone to go to sleep or the display to turn off till the time you are looking at the screen. So it is very helpful whenever you are reading something on your smartphone, you are not tapping it, but you are actually looking at your smartphone. This phone also supports 5 volts reverse wireless charging, which is kept disabled by default, but you can enable it easily from the control center here. You will get this battery share option. So you can just tap on it whenever you need the reverse wireless charging but the interesting thing here is that this is also integrated with this glyph interface so whenever the reverse wireless charging is being used the glyph interface glows for a few seconds to notify that there is also the support for lockdown mode here so if you press the power up key and the volume up key together to go into this power menu you'll see this lockdown option here and if you use this feature it does nothing it just locks your smartphone but it just makes your lock more secure since the fingerprint sensor and face unlock stop working, you will not see any notifications on the lock screen unless you unlock the smartphone once using a traditional password or pin or pattern whatever you have used. And this is just a one time thing. Once you will unlock your smartphone, the smartphone will behave normally. You also get the support for Wi-Fi plus hotspot aka Wi-Fi tethering. So if you enable the hotspot here along with the Wi-Fi, you will notice that the Wi-Fi doesn't turn off. So it lets you enable both the Wi-Fi and hotspot at the same time. And you can use this if you want to share your Wi-Fi to some other devices. You also get the option for automatic call recording. However, you can clearly see that there is a Google dialer here. So if you are going to record a call, the phone is going to notify the other person that the call is being recorded. You can click on these three dots, go to settings. You will find the call recording option here. Since this is a brand new OS and the ringtones are also new here, I'm sure you will be excited to listen to these notification sounds as well. So I'm going to play the default call and notification ringtone for you. This one is the default ringtone for calls. And this one is for the notification sound. These were just the default ones. You do have more options here. And you can also use this sound only mode if you want to turn off Glyph for one of these. Screen recording is present here but it is the default stoke Android 12 screen recorder. Audio, however, you can capture the device audio and microphone audio at the same time, but there are no options to choose for the video quality. You also get the support for scrolling screenshots with the interesting new animation. Whenever you capture a normal screenshot, you get this option of capture more. And by tapping on it, you can see the whole long window and you can scroll the screenshot up till where you want. And you can easily click on the save icon to save this long screen into a single screenshot. Now dark mode I know is kind of very basic feature and should not be here in this video but it is implemented in such a great way that I could not resist myself. Let me tell you that this also comes enabled by default and it looks very premium. Instead of getting pitch black backgrounds, you get a tint of the accent color which you have selected for your notifications and the text here. I really liked how dark mode has been implemented here and it is also because of its very good quality display. Before we go into the camera features, let me tell you some basic and important features in the settings. You get the NFC support here. You can go to settings, connected devices, connection preferences and you can find the NFC support here. It comes enabled by default so you can easily use your NFC devices with this one. However, I don't see any payment app from nothing as of now which I believe is definitely going to come. If you go to settings, notifications, you also get this notification history option here. You can enable this if you want to save complete history of your notifications. So if you miss any important notification and you want to go back and look at it, you can come 
come here and see the complete history of the notifications. By default, you also don't see the battery percentage in the status bar, but you can enable it. You need to go to settings, battery, just enable it and you will be able to see the percentage. Talking about some basic display features here, you get the option of phone size and display size in the display settings. You can both increase and decrease the size from whatever is given by default. You can also customize the colors of this display. By default, alive is selected here, but you also have this option of standard and you can also control the color temperature by using this bar and you also get this night light feature which is also known as reading mode. Since this phone comes with a 120Hz smooth refresh rate, you also get this smooth display feature here. This is again enabled by default and I would recommend you to keep this enabled because this helps you provide very premium like feeling. You also have the Android 12's extra dim feature here. You will find it under the accessibility settings here. You can even control the intensity of this extra dim feature so you can actually make your smartphone brightness very dim at night. One very useful privacy related feature you will find in privacy settings which is the privacy dashboard feature. If you want to see a complete history of which permissions have been used by which applications, you can see it here. Let's say I can use the location usage history. I can see that these three applications has used location at this this time and if I see any unnecessary app here, I can even go and disable the location usage for that app. You can also change the system navigation. To do that, you need to go to settings, gestures and you will find system navigation here. By default, gesture navigation is selected. You can also shift to three button navigation if you want. A useful gesture which you will find under this gesture settings is the quickly open camera gesture. From anywhere in your smartphone, you can press the double press key if you directly want to open up the camera. Another very useful option in the system settings you will find is the game mode. So if you want to use this game mode, you can add your games into this app list. Whenever you will use those games, the phone will automatically shift to high performance mode to give you better gaming performance. You also have this do not disturb settings here. If you want to reduce the size of notifications you see when you are gaming, you can even block the incoming calls while you are gaming and use this miss touch prevention to prevent any miss touches. And now it's the time to talk about the camera features. So let's start with the camera interface. You don't get the native Google camera app here. You have this nothing OS camera app which looks good and somewhat similar to iOS. You have got your basic options here if you want to switch to the ultra wide normal mode or there are the modes there, video, slow motion and you get this more option to see extra modes whichever are present and whenever in any mode, if you want to see some extra settings, you can just swipe down on your smartphone and you'll be able to see these extra settings here. Let me tell you that by default, the phone always captures a 12 megapixel photo but if you swipe down here, you can actually change this 12 megapixel to a 50 megapixel mode and then you will be able to capture the high resolution photos with both the normal lens as well as the ultra wide lens since both here are the 50 megapixel lenses. Similarly for videos, by default the videos are set to full HD 60 FPS but you can actually change this to 4K videos to get better video quality and again you can shoot 4K videos from both normal and the ultra wide camera. Since we are talking about video recording here, let me tell you that this phone also supports the night mode in video recording. However, it is only supported in the primary rear camera but you can definitely use it to capture better videos during night. You also get the option to shoot slow more videos here but it is again kind of very limited. You only get to record 120 fps slow motion videos and you can only do that with primary rear camera. You cannot use ultra wide or front camera for slow motions. If we talk about the portrait mode, you get this variable depth effect feature here so you can tap on this icon to change the amount of bokeh you see in the background of your photos. If you go into more modes here, you will see this macro mode. However, you will not see any dedicated macro lens here, but the 50 megapixel ultra wide lens is used to capture macro photos here. Another useful mode which you will see is the expert mode or pro mode here. This again I felt is very limited here. You can only use this pro mode for photos and that too just the rear cameras. You cannot use it for front camera and you cannot use it for videos. You also get the option to capture burst photos. For that you will have to swipe down going to the camera settings and click on this press and hold shutter and here you can see that you can select the burst shot. So after enabling this you just need to hold your shutter button and the phone will start capturing burst photos. So these were the best 40 features of Nothing OS 1.0.2. Please like and share this video if you love watching these features and let me know in the comment section which feature do you think is the best for this Nothing OS. You can subscribe to this channel if you like watching these kind of videos. Thanks a lot for watching this video till the end.